Our next speaker, Renee Krackman from Harvard Law School, who was my teacher when I was at Harvard. And one point to think about for the Israelis in the crowd, you know, that I, you know, while Renee is getting ready, is that if you look at voting on self-dealing transactions in Israel, when you have a mandatory majority of minority vote, it actually looks as if foreign institutional investors are more pro-controlling shareholders than the local ones, which I guess raises interesting questions. So I'm going to continue along the lines of, uh, uh, of Ron Gilson, uh, talking about uh, controlling shareholders and uh, also, also um, stealing his excellent title, uh, uh, of his 2007 working paper, uh, Controlling Shareholders, Complicating the Taxonomy. Uh, so I want to complicate the taxonomy uh, still further. Um, and I certainly agree uh, with Ron that um, Um, controlling shareholders and their uh, perhaps semi-legitimate part siblings, uh, private equity firms, uh, are still around, more critical now than they ever have been. Indeed, um, I'm going to make the further assertion that it's kind of a golden era right now for good old-fashioned controlling shareholders. Good old-fashioned controlling shareholders, some of whom we haven't seen the likes of since the, the late 19th century. Um, technology developments, the internet, computer services in US, China, India, Israel, the former USSR, um, lots of controlling shareholders, albeit they're called oligarchs sometimes and less flattering names than that at other times. Uh, the Brazilians in particular have become masters of the low tech. Masters of the low tech, um, thinking now about uh, Georgie Lehman's enormous acquisitions, most recently with uh, Warren Buffett, uh, what is it, Heinz, uh, Pillsbury, now Kraft. I mean, these are pillars of American fast food uh, economy, plus the largest single beer company in the world. Um, all controlled companies. Not to say without minority investors of some sort or another, but all strongly held legal control rights. Um, and, of course, um, there are also non-founder dynasties in countries, the BRIC countries, India and Brazil, that have been uh, expanding their scope uh, as well over the uh, past years. Um, so if, if controllers are, uh, uh, new controllers that is, are everywhere we look, um, one wonders what's going to be happening to them as time goes on. New controllers inevitably uh, even like one young legal professors begin to age, although they are perhaps less um, uh, less um, uh, or more generous, perhaps, in passing down the family wisdom than, uh, uh, than legal analogs. Um, so there are dynasties out there. Uh, and I think of dynasties as, by definition, second generation or third generation family-held firms where strong ownership, active participation in management uh, carries through 
the family lineage. And it turns out that's enormously important. Um, maybe not so much in the United States, but in much of Asia, Korea, India, Thailand, Hong Kong. Um, family, con family conglomerates that must be ru ruled, the transition must be made to a new member of the family, and that in turn seems to generate uh, considerable instability. Um, I had reason to uh, look into the Korean case in particular uh, not long ago. As you know, this is a period in which the third and fourth generations of the uh, Korean families at the center of Chables are beginning to turn over. Uh, and my understanding is that this has resulted in family tensions in virtually every uh, major chable in Korea. Uh, and the reasons are not hard to assess. Um, the new guy doesn't have younger, older brother or sister, doesn't have the charisma of the founder or the inherited charisma of the founder doesn't have anything like the familiarity, how could he or she, uh, with the operations of these complex groups. And um, doesn't have the monetary stake uh, that the original uh, family had. There's no device like a trust that can put the family's holdings free of tax through. Uh, instead, there's this crazy game that's now extremely sophisticated between the state and the chamber owners uh, in avoiding gift and estate taxation that would take control power out of the hands of the um, controlling family. Uh, I don't know who's winning the game. This is round four, round five of the game. Apparently, gift tax is as hot as estate tax as a device for uh, blocking various loopholes uh, that had previously allowed uh, cash flows to be channeled to favored son, favored daughter uh, um, companies to uh, have an appropriate ownership uh, claim. Um, and among the consequences of this, uh, of this extraordinary period of transition are first that an, impar an, an incredibly lucrative uh, aspect of uh, corporate law in Korea is, I'm told, family counseling and family law. It falls on the lawyers to manage the owners. Um, and uh, it may also be the case that uh, long-time professional managers have begun to occupy roles with sufficient status, have sufficient gravitas within the organization so that they become substitute or alternative chairman. Um, one can see maybe a transition from Zaibatsu to, uh, to Chable. You know, the owners just fade away. I don't think that's not quite how Marx expressed it, ownership fading away, but um, and, and maybe that explains some of uh, Kim Jong-un's uh, uh, recent, uh, uh, <laughs> recent efforts to control his own uh, professional managers in the north of the Korea. <laughs> um, uh, let's see.
which you have it in a moment. So, um, so su succession is the issue, and uh, uh, one wonders what, 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 what one's going to see 20 years hence in the new generation of controlling shareholders. Some jurisdictions like India have ownership forms that reinforce the ability of the family to own equity stakes. There's the, the Hindu family is an ownership unit. Uh, the shares are owned qua family. Um, and in the famous case of, uh, of, uh, of the uh, feuding bro bro brothers, uh, uh, whose names escape me at the moment. Um, it was the mother who stepped in, of course, and divided the empire. Reliance Industries divided the empire into two halves, one for the older brother and for the younger brother, uh, something the state itself had not managed to do. Um, Okay, so one question I want to put to you is, is what's going to become of, the, of this new generation of controlling uh, shareholders? Uh, a second question I want to raise is what's happening to last year's controlling shareholders, um, which don't seem to figure for a variety of reasons. Uh, so strongly as they once did. Um, we all know our families, right? We all know the Fords and um, <coughs> the, uh, the Kellogg's, the Salzburgers, the, uh, you, you can go on with the list of the United States, 100 or so people, owners, in the fourth, fifth, sixth generations, maybe they have a trust, they have somebody uh, coordinating their ownership shares so that they can exercise a modicum of supervision or a role as a director over the firm that bears their name. Um, Europe is replete with foundations, Henry Hansman's uh, study topics. Some foundations like Borge uh, Phillips Foundation are a little more than family um, vehicles for exercising a monetary role over um, an enterprise that has long since been micromanaged by the Phillipses and and the Borsches and so forth uh, that are merely supervised by them or perhaps totally, uh, totally um, uh, divided from them as when um, an enterprise is uh, given to full foundation ownership. Um, so in the West and in Europe, even the, even the, the uh, the, 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 the much noted Swedish uh, or Nordic government structures seem so pale and so remote and monitoring like uh, and professional and quiet as opposed to the muscular control that you see exercised <coughs> in the earlier cases I noted, whether by Indian family companies or, in the latest case, um, uh, Georgie, uh, Georgie Newman, uh, Georgie Lema, excuse me. Um, so that's one, that's one outcome, controlling families, control shareholders, first generation, sharp bite, and gradually over time they fade away. Um, Another possibility is they build in their own self-destruction at the outset in the West. Uh, I don't think Lehman, for example, or Warren Buffett plans to lead a dynasty. Uh, at least nominally, the values are meritocratic. The family, if there is one, is the organization. 
uh, the actual flesh and blood will have <coughs> enough funds to pay through college for several, several generations hence, uh, but won't be playing with uh, granddaddy's uh, well-machined uh, uh, instrument. Um, and so, fade away possibility. Fourth puzzle is to what extent, it's a question really, to what extent is private equity, standard private equity structure, private equity partnership uh, that serves as the principal partner in uh, successive generations of limited partnerships. Um, to what extent can that be compared to a temporary controlling shareholder? A uh, little while, private equity company can do what it wants in terms of hiring and firing, making management changes, etc. But the time is running out all the way along, and um, the uh, limited partnership constraints are uh, quite binding. Uh, the uh, incentives are complicated. It's not the kind of incentives that owners have. At least half come from some kind of fee structure. There are multiple agency issues uh, extending both to investors in the private equity funds and to the portfolio companies vis-a-vis uh, -vis the private equity, private equity funds. Um, they're, they're not a full fix. Whatever they are, they're not a full fix to the uh, limitations, uh, the division between control and ownership and the limitation uh, that that division puts on the ability for managers to exercise discretion, discretion uh, power. Um, so query whether we should conceive them as another mode of managerial compensation rather than as a uh, independent ownership form. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I want to thank all the speakers. We will be back here at 1.30 after lunch. <laughs>